NTC Tactical Talk, Passage of Lines, presented by Cobra Team. Transitions represent great risk to force and risk to mission for a cavalry squadron. Passages of Lines often use transitions between the squadron and adjacent battalions. A well-executed passage of lines is paramount to minimize risk to all involved, maintain tempo during transitions on the battlefield, and ultimately enable achievement of the decisive point. Doctrine provides a solid foundation for any unit beginning to plan a passage of lines. To enable effective execution, a detailed plan must be developed and shared across echelons and then rehearsed to ensure common understanding for all units involved. A well-executed passage of lines includes adequate planning, coordination between units, and a plan for command and control. Passage of lines is an operation in which a force moves forward or rearward through another force's combat positions with the intention of moving into or out of enemy contact. A passage may be designated as a forward or rearward passage of lines. The commander's reasoning for conducting a passage of lines are to sustain the tempo of operation, maintain the viability of the defense by transferring responsibility from one unit to another, transition from a delay or security operation from one force to a defense, and or free a unit from another mission or task. The purpose of a forward passage line is to move forces forward to conduct operations. It ensures the maintenance of the enemy contact while allowing relief of previously committed forces. A rearward passage of lines is similar to the concept of a forward passage of lines. It continues the defense or retrograde operation, maintaining enemy contact while allowing for recovery of security or other forward forces. The operation may or may not be conducted under enemy pressure. You will now hear from COBRA OCTs addressing considerations for the following warfighting functions. Intelligence, fires, seaburn, sustainment, medical, and command and control. During f pull and r pull operations, intelligence, and specifically information collection, plays a critical role. Intelligence professionals must focus on providing a clear and detailed sit temp with an emphasis on time phase lines, probable lines of contact, and decision points in order to provide commanders and staffs at Echelon with a clear understanding of where when and with what composition and disposition threat forces are likely to be expected. This will set the conditions for the commander to make timely and accurate decisions by creating and delineating clear and actionable transition points which will enable the R-pull or F-pull. Additional care must be given to a well-planned IC scheme, an in-depth IC plan that makes use of organic capabilities as well as assets from adjacent or higher headquarters is necessary in order to provide the information to make decisions in real time. This plan must include clearly articulated named areas of interest informed by high value targets, high payoff targets, and enemy courses of action, as well as nested PIRs to enable the commander to implement the triggers that begin and end the F-pull or R-pull based on the observed enemy composition. When developing these plans, intelligence professionals must be sure to include clearly understood intelligence handover lines, not to leave any reconnaissance assets in reserve, or fail to plan for the employment of more capable assets from a higher headquarters. Fires in the passage of lines. Best practices include detailed coordination between passing units and should include existing targets, fire plans, fire support coordination measures, and clearance of fire procedures. Consider planning smoke to screen friendly movement or obscure enemy observation through the passage points. Plan restricted fire areas or no fire areas and critical friendly zones at the passage points as well as on-call coordinated fire lines. For the forward passage of lines, a best practice is for the passing force fire support element and command post to co-locate with the stationary force fire support element and command post and assign priority of fire to the passing force. 
For the rearward passage of lines, plan fires on passage points to be fired after friendly units have passed through and consider the use of scatterable mines to close passage lines. And for both the forward and rearward passage of lines, do not forget to plan for counterfire, which will be controlled by the stationary force. The squadron chemical officers should anticipate the needs of the squadron in order to enhance the unit's mobility in a seaburn environment. The squadron chemical officers should coordinate with the higher headquarters to incorporate decontamination sites into the planning of passage points for R pool and F pool movements to allow for rapid reconstitution of combat power and to prevent the spread of contamination. Prior to the execution of R pool and F pool, the stationary unit must establish operational security measures to include the emplacement of seaburn reconnaissance and biological detection systems in and around passage points in order to allow for rapid assessments of hazards in the event of a seaburn attack. For F pool, the passing unit seaburn reconnaissance element should be integrated with the cavalry troop who will be operating forward of the release points in order to perform general reconnaissance security and tactical enabling tasks to support the F-Pool. For our pool the passing unit seaborne reconnaissance elements will typically be attached to the cavalry troop that's positioned towards the rear of the brigade combat team's formation to provide an early warning of seaborne attacks. FM 3-90 states the stationary unit is responsible for providing coordinated or emergency statement for the passing unit when conducting a passage of lines. It is important that the passing unit still plans on providing its own sustainment. In an f pole, the passing unit conducts an internal class 1 and 3 resupply in its attack position prior to moving through the passage point. Recovery assets are staged in the attack position to move forward and pull back disabled vehicles to the unit maintenance collection point during movement. In an r pole, the Class 1 and 3 resupply plan is the same as the f pole. Passing unit recovery assets are staged near the contact point to pull forward disabled vehicles during movement to the assembly area for consolidation. The medical operations officer must be integrated in the planning process and begin coordination with the stationary unit in order to identify the location of their role 1, coordinate for support, plan routes to the stationary unit's AO. If possible, conduct joint medical rehearsals between stationary and passing unit. A best practice is splitting your squadron aid station into treatment team Alpha and Bravo during passage operations. This allows you to establish role one capability on both sides of the passage point so that the traffic through flows one direction. During f pool is to coordinate with the Brigade Support Medical Company for direct support evacuation assets or a manned ambulance exchange point that can support the increased distance from Roll 2. For our pool is to augment the trail element with additional medical and CASAVAC assets to ensure any casualties taken during the retrograde are recovered and evacuated through the passage point so that traffic continues to flow in one direction. The three main concerns for command and control during an f pole or r pole are first, place a C2 node at the contact point. This helps reduce the friction between the adjacent battalion and the troops moving through the passage lane. The C2 node can be the tactical command post, but we have also seen it work with a smaller C2 node led by either the S3 or Op Sergeant Major. The second concern is having clear triggers for the displacement of the main command post and retransmission teams. For example, when Alpha Troop displaces is too vague because that can be interpreted as when Alpha Troop begins tearing down OPs or when they have initiated movement toward the passage lane. The third concern is validating the unit's pace plan and communications equipment during and after the f pull r pull rehearsal. Few considerations for your organization pre and post execution of a passage alliance. Pre, consider conducting a rehearsal with your adjacent units. This provides an excellent opportunity for your organization to rehearse the passage lanes and identify all the key players before execution. Post passage alliance, consider a couple key points. Most units conduct a resupply of all classes of supply immediately following a passage alliance. Commanders should strongly consider assigning a priority by unit to cut down on confusion across their organization and streamline efforts. Number two, this offers a great time for you to conduct interface with your higher headquarters to help steer MDMP. At a minimum, consider sending your AS3 and S2 a best practice is to send a field grade, if not the commander, to help drive the operations process. During the conduct of any major operation, the command sergeant major must position himself 
in areas that provide the best vantage point possible to reduce any levels of friction. Missions such as forward or rearward passage of lines are extremely difficult operations. The commander may designate either the operations sergeant major or the command sergeant major to assist in planning, preparation, and execution of the passage of lines to ensure the transfer of responsibility is conducted properly. To maximize whatever planning time is available, the following actions must be considered. One, the organization of personnel and equipment. Two, order of movement. Three, graphic control measures. And four, protection and safety mitigation to assist in everyone's situational awareness. When preparing to conduct a passage of lines, the Sergeant Major ensures the subordinate leaders possess the proper standard operating procedures and that the adequate number of rehearsals have been conducted to carry out the mission. He ensures that the SOP is being used, is nested with his unit's higher headquarters. In doing so, it confirms that all subordinate organizations involved have a shared understanding of not only the complexity, but also the conditions specific to the type of passage lines being conducted. During execution, the Sergeant Major's role may be to assist subordinate commanders with the overall command and control of the passage point. When empowered by the commander, the Sergeant Major can ensure that adjacent unit coordination is conducted prior to and during the mission. This will help mitigate risk, make certain that proper information is shared, and to ensure mission accomplishment. Thank you for viewing our tactical talk focusing on passage of lines.